Good afternoon. I'm Brian Peace, the United States Attorney for the Eastern District of New York. Thank you all for joining us today. With me today are James Dennehy, Assistant Director in Charge of the FBI's New York Field Office. We have Deputy Chief Carlos Ortiz, Commanding Officer of the NYPD Special Victims Unit. And we have my office's outstanding prosecution team, Aaron Reed, Megan Farrell, and Philip Pilmar. We're here today to announce the arrest and charging of three defendants. Former CEO of Abercrombie & Fitch, Michael Jeffries, Matthew Smith, and James Jacobson on charges of sex trafficking and engaging in interstate prostitution. Powerful individuals for too long have trafficked and abused for their own sexual pleasure young people with few resources and a dream, a dream of securing a successful career in fashion or entertainment. To anyone who thinks they can exploit and coerce others by using the so-called casting couch system, this case should serve as a warning. Prepare to trade that couch for a bed in federal prison. The message from today's prosecution is clear. Sexually exploiting vulnerable human beings is a crime. And doing so by dangling dreams of a future in fashion or modeling or any other business is no different. My office and our law enforcement partners will always prioritize standing up for victims no matter their gender and no matter how powerful the wrongdoers think they are, we will hold them to account. As we allege in the indictment, between 1992 and 2014, Michael Jeffries was the chief executive officer of Abercrombie and Fitch. Abercrombie was a widely known clothing retailer with stores around the world. Aspiring fashion models knew that a place on one of Abercrombie's iconic ads could be the ticket to success in the modeling industry. But while Jeffries was the CEO of one of the most recognizable clothing retailers in the world, he was using his power, his wealth, and his influence to traffic men for his own sexual pleasure and that of his romantic partner, Matthew Smith. The charging documents describe in graphic and disturbing detail the violent and exploitive acts these defendants perpetrated, for which they will now face justice in a court here in the Eastern District of New York. So here's what's alleged in the indictment. Jeffries and Smith employed James Jacobson to act as a recruiter to find men. Jacobson engaged in, quote, tryouts with men across the world where he would typically pay them to engage in sex acts with him. Following the tryouts with Jacobson, Smith would often then personally approve whether the men who were selected would meet Jeffries and Smith. The defendants would fly the selected men to Jeffries and Smith's homes in the Hamptons, in New York City, or to hotels around the world in such places as England, France, Italy, Morocco, and St. Bart's for the purpose of attending events to engage in commercial sex. But beyond simply hiring men for sex, Jeffries, Smith, and Jacobson used force, fraud, and coercion to traffic those men for their own sexual gratification. For example, as alleged, the defendants employed a referral system and an interview process that did not inform the men of the details of the sex events before they attended, including the full extent and nature of the sexual activity that would be required of the men at these events. They caused the men to believe that attending these sex events could yield modeling opportunities with Abercrombie or otherwise benefit their careers. 
Smith and Jeffries employed a secret staff to operate these sex events. The staff, the staff ensured that the men signed non-disclosure agreements and handed over their personal items, such as their phones, before the start of the events to maintain the secrecy of these events. The defendants caused the men to believe that not complying with requests for certain acts, sex acts, during the events could harm their careers. The defendants pressured the men to consume alcohol, Viagra, and muscle relaxants known as poppers during the sex events. And they required the presence of staff during the sexual activity and ensured that the men did not leave the sex events until Jeffries and Smith decided that the sessions were over. Also, as alleged, on more than one occasion, Jeffries and Smith either directed others to inject or personally injected men with an erection-inducing substance for the purpose of causing the men to engage in sex acts the men were incapable of engaging in or unwilling to engage in. Additionally, the indictment alleges on more than one occasion when men did not or could not consent, Jeffries and Smith violated the bodily integrity of these men by subjecting them or continuing to subject them to invasive sexual and violent contact by body parts and other objects. As alleged in the indictment, Jeffrey Smith and Jacobson didn't just carry this activity on for a couple of occasions. Their sex trafficking and prostitution enterprise lasted at least from the end of 2008 until early 2015. During that period, the defendants hired dozens of men and transported them to New York and around the globe. They spent millions of dollars on a massive infrastructure to support this operation and maintain its secrecy. This included hundreds of thousands of dollars of cash for commercial sex, prolific amounts of money for staff to run the sex events, money for domestic travel, international travel, hotel rooms, surface, services from a security company, and Jacobson's salary, among other things. Now this investigation remains ongoing. Although there are 15 John Doe's identified as victims in this indictment, this interstate prostitution venture encompassed dozens and dozens of men. And I encourage anyone with information about this case, including anyone who was a victim of the defendant's alleged crimes, to contact the FBI. 1-800-CALL-FBI. Now, I want to thank the victims who have already come forward for sharing their stories. Prosecutions like this are really impossible without the bravery of victims who are willing to report what happened to them to law enforcement. But this office, the Department of Justice, and its law enforcement partners will continue to work tirelessly to protect victims from powerful individuals who use their wealth and their influence to exploit and harm others for sexual gratification. In addition to my team, I'd like to give special thanks to FBI Special Agent Amanda Young and NYPD Detectives Paul Byrne and Antonio Pagan, who have worked hard on this investigation in the pursuit of justice. I'll now turn it over to FBI Assistant Director in Charge, Dan Heath. Thank you, Brianna. Good afternoon. I'm Jim Dennehy, Assistant Director in Charge of the FBI's New York Field Office. Today's indictment highlights the abhorrent behavior of Michael Jeffries, Matthew Smith, and James Jacobson. What's alleged in the indictment is not only beyond disturbing, dishonorable, and disgraceful, but simply put, it's criminal. In short, these individuals are charged with running a prostitution 
an international sex trafficking business using a combination of force, fraud, and coercion to induce victims into participating in their illegal operations. The alleged behavior occurred here in New York City and in multiple countries worldwide. The defendants allegedly preyed on the hopes and dreams of their victims by exploiting, abusing, and silencing them to fulfill their own desires with insidious secret intentions. Despite the alleged efforts of Jeffries, Smith, and Jacobson to conceal their crimes, efforts that included threatening victims and requiring them to sign non-disclosure agreements, among other things, their plan failed. This case is yet another example of individuals using their wealth, power, or reputation to manipulate and control others for their own personal interests. I'd like to speak for a second to the victims in this case and others, both those who have come forward and those we believe are still out there. The FBI and our partners make it our mission to prioritize those who have been victimized by sexual predators. We know victims come from all walks of life. There are neighbors, our friends, and members of our community. We won't allow these criminal acts to go unchecked. We know our agency, however, cannot combat this threat alone. And we remain committed to investigating and bringing these cases forward to prosecution with our partners. We have dedicated teams ready to listen to you and to advocate for you. And we have victim specialists available to provide the necessary resources you need. If you or someone you know is a victim in this case or any other, the number to call is 1-800-CALL-FBI or online at tips.fbi.gov. We are committed to ensuring you not only get the assistance you need to cope, but also that you're aware of your rights. I'd like to thank the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of New York, Breon Peace, and the members of EDNY's Civil Rights Section and Long Island Division's Criminal Section. I'd also like to thank the NYPD's Detective Bureau and its Specialty Enforcement Division and Special Victims Division, as well as the FBI's Miami and Milwaukee field offices. And also, I'd like to thank the dedicated investigators and personnel from the FBI, NYPD, Child Exploitation, Human Trafficking Task Force. Once again, we are waiting to hear from you, and we're here to help you. The number to call is 1-800-CALL-FBI. Thank you. And now I'd like to turn it over to Deputy Chief Ortiz. Hello, my name is uh, Deputy Chief Carlos Ortiz. I am the commanding officer of the NYPD Special Victims Unit. Uh, good morning, everyone, and, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. The NYPD is committed to fighting for all victims of sexual violence. We stand here today with our federal partners as we continue that mission. Uh, our, coordinated, our continued co collaboration allows us the necessary resources to ensure successful prosecutions. First of all, I want to thank Attorney Pierce FBI Assistant Director in charge, Dennehy, and their staff, along with my human trafficking unit, led by uh, Captain Chase and Lieutenant Piccarello, for their diligent work in regards to this case. As evident by today's uh, announcement, we, ho we hope our work is able to bring some sense of dignity back to these survivors. The NYPD encourages all survivors of sexual-based uh, sexual violence, including trafficking, to come forward and speak with us, regardless of gender, immigration status, race, or sexual orientation. Our investigators are equipped to handle all reports. Our joint federal teams remain committed to end all human trafficking. The mission and obligation of the NYPD Special Victims Unit is to provide a voice for those that feel unheard. We are here for you. Together with our federal partners, we will continue to fight for the victims of the city and all over the country. Thank you.
take a few questions. Yeah, so, um, you know, these prosecutions really de depend, as I said earlier, on the bravery of the victims to come forward and tell their stories. That happened in this case. Once that happened, our team and our law enforcement partners investigated this case thoroughly and quickly, and we're now arriving at this day when we're charging the conduct. So I say to all victims, um, we're here, we will listen, we will investigate, and bring charges where appropriate. The intersection of the civil lawsuits, there really is, we, our investigation is based on our investigation, the facts, the evidence we find, and the law. And so the, the civil lawsuits don't dictate what we do or vice versa. I will say, I think the best way to answer that is to say this investigation remains ongoing. We encourage any victims or any witnesses to come forward with additional information. And if there's a need to, to bring further charges, we, of course, will not hesitate to do that. Uh, I had a question about the events themselves. When they took place, were they like company-sanctioned events, or did they at any point happen on company grounds? And about the John Doe's. Were they employed at all by the company? Were they working in stores? Did any of them actually make it to be part of these like advertisements? Or were they just simply brought in for these purposes and then recycled out? Well, I can't go beyond the allegations in the indictment. Um, we don't have evidence that this happened on company grounds. But I will not go further into who is aware where things happen beyond what is already in the indictment including with respect to what happened after the events. I can't get into um, our interview process. We interviewed many, many witnesses. Um, as I said, the team and our law enforcement partners did a very thorough investigation into this activity. We have named 15 John Doe's, but as I indicated before, there may be other victims out there. We're hoping to hear from folks after this, and we will take action as appropriate. How did your office first learn about these events over time? I think we became aware through uh, media reports, uh, which is not uncommon um, when you have um, media that reports on um, stories that relate to crimes, alleged crimes, um, we follow up and, and do our diligence. Okay. Thank you. So, second. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for being with us, Governor Mark, Special Agency. Two questions. I think I want to clarify a little bit on Mark Morales' point. Are, is, the, is the indictment allege that the resources of Abercrombie and Fitch uh, were involved in the furtherance of the sex trafficking for the company itself? would have any liability. And then secondly, uh, generally, you know, just from a sex, um, from a sex victims and sexual violence and uh, investigatory standpoint, we have this situation, this, this, these scenarios that are now victims are coming more forward publicly about power, control, uh, manipulation of those who um, have aspirations. You have the Sean Combs case, you have this case. Are, are we finding there are going to be more widespread investigations with regard to officials in power exploiting and manipulating people. Do we see like a trend happening where more victims are coming forward? So it's, just, it's a twofold thing. Yeah, so on the first question, we don't allege in the indictment that the resources of Abercrombie and Fitch were used in furtherance of this criminal activity. But we, what we do allege and acknowledge is that the fact that um, Michael Jeffries was CEO of Abercrombie & Fitch, was utilized. And the potential of an opportunity 
at Abercrombie to be in an ad or things like that were one of some of the carrots that I think people perceived as what they would achieve by participating in this activity. On your second question, I don't know if I could say it's a trend one way or the other. Um, I'm hopeful that to the extent there are victims out there who have been subjected to trafficking activity, abuse, exploitation, that they would be confident enough in their federal and state law enforcement partners to come forward. As I said before, we listen, we investigate, we take action, and we will not hesitate to bring charges. In this office in particular, and my civil rights team, I think you know we have a track record of bringing cases with respect to people in power who have taken advantage of and abused others. We prosecuted R. Kelly. We brought the Nixium case. We don't hesitate to hold the powerful and the wealthy to account if they have violated federal criminal laws. And just to clarify, um, when I say a trend, a trend from the power, I, you may have just clarified that, but with regard to you know, how widespread and pervasive it seems to be coming, becoming uh, externally facing with regard to those in power, power control, manipulating and exploiting people. Are we finding, are you finding that uh, your investigations are As I said before, I think we stand ready to investigate any criminal conduct, whether it relates to rich and powerful or not so rich and powerful. If sex trafficking laws, interstate prosecution laws, et cetera, are violated, we stand ready to investigate and bring charges as appropriate. Uh, well, I think I'll take the second part first. I mean, venue is driven by the activity, as I mentioned earlier, and as alleged in the indictment, much of this ap activity happened in New York, in the Hamptons in particular, which is a part of the Eastern District of New York. We have JFK uh, International Airport, and travel comes to and through JFK, et cetera. So that's sort of the reason, in part, that we are um, bringing this case, among other reasons. There are victims here, et cetera. Um, there's really nothing more beyond the indictment that I can um, discuss regarding why the choice was for heterosexual men, et cetera. I think I'm limited to what's, what's there. Any other questions? John. Sir, uh, on another topic, there's great public interest in this city regarding corruption allegations. Oh, you're going to take questions city on, this, on this topic. Estate. We're not answering any questions on other topics. We said that when the press conference started. Next question. Um, can you talk about the, what's going to happen next as far as when um, they're going to be New York and when they Yes, yeah, so um, they will have their initial appearances in courts, Florida and I think Minnesota. Um, and then they will be brought to New York or travel to New York to be arraigned. We're expecting that that will happen either at the end of this week or early next week. In terms of detention, we put in a detention memo um, outlining our position for um, Matthew Smith. We are seeking detention um, in part, in part, he, because he is a dual citizen of the United States and the UK. The risk of flight are particularly acute with him. And for the other two, we're seeking substantial bail packages. If those aren't met, of course, we expect that they would be detained as well. Obviously, those decisions are up to uh, the judges who um, do the arraignment. Sorry, like a trial topic. Uh, the, um, in regards to evidence, you said phones were Do you have any videos on top of uh, or other uh, evidence to 
besides the story of the witnesses that would help you uh, substantiate the idea? We have substantial evidence. Um, we have uh, travel records. We have financial records. We have testimony of victims and other witnesses. So we think we have a lot of evidence that corroborates the, the charges in this case. Last question. Thank you. There's a press release, an indictment, and a detention letter on the table when you go out. Feel free to help yourself to it.